compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the yes. state of New Jersey. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlanta County Board of Chosen Freeholders was provided in the following manner. Published in the press of Atlantic City and mailed to the current, the Daily Journal, the Hamilton Gazette, and the Hamilton News. And has been posted on the bulletin boards in the county office buildings in Atlantic City, the Stillwater Building in Northfield, and the county clerk's office in Mays Landing. Um, I, I'd like to ask, as we pray today, that we keep those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic and those suffering from mental health in, all, in our thoughts, in particularly as we observe Asian Pacific Heritage Month, that we keep those with family and friends in India in our thoughts and prayers as they are facing a COVID surge of immense proportion. It's a reminder that we all need to continue to be vigilant and heed the advice of professionals. Okay, Spirit of God, we thank you for the wonder of your presence each day. Help us to realize the possibilities within each of us to influence others in all that we say and do. Oh God, keep us focused and help us remember that what we face, we face with you. By your grace, help us to live in ways pleasing to you and helpful to those around us. Amen. Hey, we'll Amen. face the flag for flag salute. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of, of the United, United States of America and to the and republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, we'll have a roll call, please. Chairwoman Kern, uh, Commissioner Corsi telephoned and indicated that he would be joining us late today. Ballas? Here. Tino? Here. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? I saw her. Gatto? Here. Bisley? Here. And Kern. Here. Okay, commissioners have had an opportunity to review the minutes from March 16th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the March 16th, 2021 minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? We'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? She may be having an issue with her audio. Uh, she contacted me earlier, so hopefully she'll be able to get in, but I'm going to mark her yes. Gatto? Wait, you're going to mark her yes? She's on. I can see her, but I don't. She, if she nodding her head? You can't. Yeah. yeah. There. All right. Well, she's oh. nodding her head. All right. Uh, Gatto, yes. That she's on. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Anyone that would like to speak during the public comments, please type yes and the resolution number in the question and answer box. Any items not listed on the agenda, you may speak during the public comments <coughs> and do the same thing. Uh, you'll be raised and then you'll be raised from an attendee to a panelist. When you're raised, Please state your name and town you reside in. I would like at this time to move up resolution recognizing Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers, Inc. Presented to Linda Flake, President and CEO. I'll make that motion. Second. <coughs> Motions been made and second. Roll call. Alice? Yes. Pino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick. Oh. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so resolution 262. Atlantic County Board of Commissioners resolution commending Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated and their effort to support the fight against COVID-19. 
So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? If I may. Yes, please. Uh, just to compliment Linda, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with the Southern Family Medical here locally uh, for quite a few years. They've done a fantastic job as a local partner providing health services to so many. And I just wanted to be sure on the record, I know I've, I've said it to them at the office enough times, uh, they, they really deserve credit for doing a fantastic job, especially now even during the, uh, the COVID vaccines. They've uh, vaccinated quite a few people that uh, maybe wouldn't otherwise, but that's, you know, especially some seniors I sent that couldn't f figure out through the email service when the process was originally uh, came out, they were fantastic. So I just want to compliment and commend them. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other commissioner comments? Madam Chair. Commissioner Bells. Yeah, first of all, I just, just like to say that um, they're doing a phenomenal job, um, especially when, you know, we needed people to step up and you know serve the public during this pandemic they were there for us along with other medical professionals um if possible can, can the clerk read the resolution in full that way the, the people that are on that haven't had a chance to get it online can see the full impact of this resolution madam clark certainly Thank you. We're, You're welcome. Whereas Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated is a community based healthcare provider serving more than 50,000 residents in Southern New Jersey in largely rural areas with an emphasis on equitable distribution of healthcare services to high risk and low income residents. And whereas Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated has been critical to Atlantic County's effort to combat COVID 19 by providing testing and vaccine services to Atlantic County residents. And whereas to date, Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated has administered over 21,000 COVID-19 tests and more than 16,000 vaccines. And whereas Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated has provided COVID-19 clinics throughout the county with the focus on providing access to farm workers, high risk individuals, seniors and members of the community that would otherwise struggle to access vaccine and testing services. And whereas Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated has been an asset to the county and the community by providing needed health care services and making health care more available to the citizens of Atlantic County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Atlantic County Board of Commissioners commends Southern Jersey Family Medical Centers Incorporated for its ongoing commitment to serve the people of Atlantic County in the fight against COVID-19 and for being a part of the resolution, excuse me, and being part of the solution to provide Atlantic County citizens access to health care services. Thank you very much. Do we have any other comments from our commissioners? Seeing none, I just want to say, Linda, we do appreciate everything you and your staff have done for our communities and our community members all thank you for the you know the hard work that you put in to you know keep us as healthy as we can be and we do have a plaque for you and we'll make sure that you get that okay do we have a roll call Alice yes Bertino yes days yes Fitzpatrick Gatto? Yes. Bisling? Yes. And Kern? Yes, motion carries. Would you like to say anything this evening? Oh, you're muted. Oh, myself. <laughs> Am I, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, great. I just like to say on behalf of the um, my staff, my team here at Southern Jersey, uh, we certainly appreciate the acknowledgement and thank you for recognizing us. Um, as you know, it is our mission. It is a part of what we do. Um, we feel a responsibility to fulfill um, obligations to the community that we have, have pledged to serve. And it is very nice to have that uh, recognized by uh, the county. So thank you very much for your acknowledgement. 
the fight goes on and we'll continue to work as hard as we can to help stop the spread and do what we do what we have to do in the community to improve the health health care of our residents and of our, our migrant and seasonal farm workers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Over 51 million adults in the United States face the reality of managing a mental health illness every day. I've asked Pat to say a couple of words about mental health and the services uh, available to Atlanta County residents prior to giving us her COVID-19 update. Her okay, team sure. Good, her good team afternoon, everyone. Hi, like Pat. Your okay. team, along with a variety of alliances, do amazing work in providing services and support to those we serve. However, unfortunately, fewer than half the, the adults who experience mental illness get the help they need. And we can certainly all agree that COVID-19 has made this even more difficult for our citizens. And Pat, you're here. Okay, thank you everyone and uh, good afternoon. Initially, I did connect with our mental health administrator, Kathy Quish, to get the most up-to-date information. Initially during COVID, many individuals with significant mental health issues that were involved in the acute partial care and other types of day programs experienced a significance loss when they were not able to go to their usual programs, unfortunately. And at that time, Kathy was receiving calls from family members who had no respite and the individuals were with much less support. <clears throat> Agencies were able to reorganize, fortunately, and offer virtual support session and checking calls, but it was still not the same as attending a day program, so they really struggled. Fortunately, at this time, more programs are reopening and partial care is back in full operation. Local mental health agencies have been offering telehealth and are now able to also offer in-office appointments. The response rate has been very good with the virtual teletherapy per agency reports. Also, many of the local support groups that are offered virtually have had significant participation. Both the Mental Health Association and our local National Alliance for Mental Illness have found greater participation in their virtual meetings, all sorts of meetings, yoga meetings, support groups, sibling support groups, spouse and partner support groups, a variety. Uh, many, if you look on our webpage, uh, Atlantic.County, uh, Dot org, you'll find many, many of those those listed. And also what we were doing initially is, you know, just for individuals that may not actually have been a part of the system or a support group, but when COVID hit, it really was very concerning to them. So we advocated for those individuals and needing some emotional support with coping with, with anything that they were dealing with with COVID to call for free emotional support, support from trained staff or 1-866-202-HELP. And that was actually New Jersey's Hope and Healing Program. And people were able to get advice on how to deal with stress for anybody impacted by the pandemic, better ways to adjust with the new reality and to mitigate certain things and review options that they had available to them during this period of time. So it is getting better as, as more and more things are opening up, but it was really a, a rough time there for a long while. Um, and as far as a briefing for COVID-19 today on May, May 4th, as of today, there's 27,091 cumulative positive COVID-19 cases up from 26,364 reported to you on April 20th. But the number of cases in the last two weeks has decreased by 45%. In addition, this past week, the COVID-19 activity level report or CALI score for the Southeast region went from high to the moderate activity level in line with the rest of the state. Positivity rates are decreasing as well as the number of cases. This is such good news and we hope to continue to move in the right direction, even as things start to open up. There are 14,823 people reported as being cleared from isolation. Unfortunately, there were 20 reported additional deaths in the past two weeks, with the total number now at 655 since the start of the pandemic. Now, going into vaccination, as of yesterday, there had been a total of 224,303 first and second doses administered to Atlanta County residents which is an increase by over 30,000 doses since April 20th. There are now 59% of Atlanta County adults who have received at least one dose of vaccine and 40% of our adults have been fully vaccinated. Of those, 46% were male and 54% were female. There also has been an increase 
and the percent of minorities being vaccinated in the last two weeks. Among the Asian population, we saw a 1% increase up to 11%. Among the Black and African American population, an increase of 1% as well, up to 8%. And a 3% increase in the Hispanic population, up to 12%. We still have a ways to go, but we still keep plugging away with our partners. Vaccine is plentiful in the county. You can actually just go on our website, Atlantic atlantic-county.org will link you to vaccine finder. Many different locations offer the vaccine at all times of day. At the Atlantic County COVID mega site, evening appointments are now available. They've started. The next one is Monday, May 10th. Walk-in appointments are being offered every day from nine to four, no appointment necessary. The new challenge that we are seeing, but not unexpected with COVID-19 is the softening of interest in vaccination. Less than a month ago, people were chomping at the bit to get it, but now it's not the case. And even though the J&J &J vaccine has been restored to use, we are finding more vaccine hesitancy with this vaccine as opposed to Moderna or Pfizer. To combat this, the division is working on various strategies, one of which is making vaccination more accessible by going to various sites where people want it, but perhaps have not taken the time to get it. Staff have reached out to the above 55 communities and facilities with an active outbreak and are offering to bring vaccine on site. Some have taken Sorry. advantage of the offer. And while the volume of people at the on site clinics may be in the tens or 20s, it's still 20, 10 or 20 more people vaccinated. We are also reaching out to our rural communities and offering to bring the vaccine to those areas as well. We are partnering with Atlantic Care to continue to increase the percentage of our population becoming vaccinated. The more of those individuals that become vaccinated, the less cases that we that we will see. <clears throat> In addition, the dangers of contracting COVID-19 are still there among unvaccinated people. And hopefully these individuals may yet decide to get vaccinated as it becomes clear how much protection this vaccine provides. Health profession professionals are still available 24 hours a day, seven days a week at New Jersey Poison Information Education System to answer any question that people a person may have. Their number is 1-800-962-1953. Southern Jersey Family Medical Center, and I'm so happy that you've honored them because it has been a tough situation out there. And we worked through last summer with testing and going to the camps and, and just God bless them for all the work that, that Linda and, and Destiny did in that population. We have the largest migrant farm community in, in the state and, and they're wonderful, but but it was it was very difficult and they and they managed it well. But they've reported, as you've indicated, that they have begun to vaccinate migrant farmers. Um, and they began actually a few weeks ago. The community-based initiative as well in Pleasantville is wrapping up this week with a high percentage of people returning for their second doses. So we were happy to see that. Many, many of the clinics we actually so everyone respond to their second dose. So in closing, just stay safe, social distance, stay home if you're sick, wear a mask when you need to, and just remember to get vaccinated if you have not already. There's many, many different places to get vaccinated. So thank you. And again, my, my hat off is to commend uh, Southern Jersey Family Medical Center. And they really fought for more vaccine to get to their communities, I, I must say, on those governor's calls. So, so thank you. Any, Any questions? Sure. Any questions from the commissioners for statements? Anything from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, once again, Pat, thank you so much to you and staff, and thank you for being here our, you know, during okay. our meetings to give us updates. Okay. Okay. Sure, take care now. Okay, thank you, you too. Okay, as we go into uh, the bond ordinance, I just want to state that um, the Bond Norton's coming up, and as an alumnus of Atlanta Cape Community College, where I completed my associate's degree prior to attending Montclair State University, I'm particularly proud to support the final reading of the next ordinance. Atlanta Cape Community College is playing an important role in educating and training our residents, which is important to our economic growth and diversification. Okay, so now can we read, uh, Madam Clerk, Bond Ordinance number three. Bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements for fiscal year 2021 by and for the Atlantic Cape Community College located within the County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, appropriating 4,800,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 4,800,000 bonds or notes of the County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, for financing such an appropriation. 
the principal of an interest on the aggregate principal amount of which will be entitled to state aid pursuant to chapter 12 of the laws of New Jersey of 1971 final reading. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Yep. Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Hi, thank you. Also, as an alumnus, and I think if we took attendance, we'd find a couple more people on this call who attended and graduated from Atlantic Cape Community College. I'm very proud and happy to support as well. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other comments from the commissioners? Do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, may we have a roll call, please? Dallas? Yes. Tino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? E yes. Risley? Yes. <clears throat> and Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that brings us down to our ordinances and ordinance number three, please. An ordinance <laughs> amending County Code Chapter 73 entitled Fees Concerning the Atlantic County Training Center fees for Police Training Academy to out of county law enforcement recruits. Final reading. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Do we have any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair, just, just want to make uh, mention that we did discuss this in the um, budget meeting and um, we recognize that um, we have one of the most sought after training academies uh, in the state. And we're also one of the cheapest. So um, we're just trying to balance that supply and demand. So um, we will see some revenue increase from this as well. Thank you, Commissioner. Do I have any other comments from our commissioners? See none, do we have any comments from the public since it's a final reading? No comments from the public. Thank you. It, may I ask, did I ask for public comments from the previous one? You did. I did, okay. Yes. I mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't go so fast. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes, motion carries. Bring us to ordinance number four, please. An ordinance establishing no passing zones along Summers Point Mays Landing Road, County Route 559 in the city of Summers Point, Atlantic County, final reading. Motion. So moved. Motion second, made, second. made and seconded. Uh, do I have any comments from the commissioners? Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Hey, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes, although I'd still like to see the reduction in speed on that roadway also. Bertino? Yes. Days? <clears throat> yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes, and as uh, Commissioner Ballas said, I know we did promise to uh, go back and maybe do another study on that road for them during the different time frames. Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to resolution 85 for consideration at the next uh, meeting. I'll entertain a motion for that. Motion to leave it on the table. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Just to remind the public, we're keeping it on the table and not approving it. Uh, we still um, are awaiting the federal guidelines for some of the money being used. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from the commissioners? Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? 
Yes, motion carries. Okay, as we get into our resolutions this evening, we have several grants that we will be voting on today for the general public participating in today's meeting. The work that is undertaken by the county to apply for grants allows us to assist in funding programs for residents and to offset costs, which would normally impact the budget. A good example of this is the recent award of $150,000 grant to implement a countywide municipal court system. The grant was uh, awarded through the state leap shared services grant program the award dollars will help offset startup costs and any upgrades at the county courthouse in mays landing which is being offered as a centralized location can we read resolution number 232 now grant application and acceptance from the united states department of transportation federal transit administration for the national rural transit community rider grant Amount not to exceed one hundred thousand dollars. So moved. Second. second. Motion moved and seconded. Do I have any comments from the commissioners? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner Ballas. Yes, to Jerry. Um, this is the the uh, transportation that was first initiated through Pascal Slicks. Just um, question: Are we completely now at zero from their foundation, and we're on our own for this? Through uh, grant money, I don't. I don't think it's completely zero yet. And and Demetrius is on. And they just had a meeting. So if if Demetrius would come on and tell you from that meeting, I think there's one more year, if I remember correctly. So the rest of twenty one. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we're still being funded through Pascal. Yes, office. I think it's one year left. I'm, again, I guess he can't get on. So yeah, I think it's one more year. Then they're then they're done. Twenty twenty two. Yes, correct. Okay, perfect. Yes, commissioner. Do we have any comments from our commissioners? Just just one more comment. Um, we did talk about ridership in on this line and <clears throat> the service is out um, uh, by fifty four and. Um, the rider, the uh, ridership over the last couple of months has been down a bit um, in comparison to last year. Um, we we believe it's attributed to the pandemic, um, but yeah. you know, just want to also encourage people to um, you know promote that kind of um, uh, transportation assistance that is out there. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other comments from the commissioners? I see none. Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Alice? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. May we have resolution 233, please? Amending resolution number 225 adopted May 19, 2020, a grant agreement with the New Jersey Division of Mental Health and Addiction Service for a county opioid epidemic innovation project grant to be used to reopen County Recovery Center and provide services to family members of opioid overdose death victims. Amount not to exceed $252,118. Second. 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 Motion made and second. Do we have any comments from our commissioners? Madam Chair, yeah. Yeah. I, I just really want to highlight uh, this program. Um, we've worked diligently and, and, and Jerry should be commended because he was part of uh, the hunt for space for this program uh, for the last year or so. Um, it's run by a, a Maze Landing native, Chris McCumber, uh, who has been in recovery for, I think, over 10 years himself. Um, it's a passion project for him, and he's really worked hard to obtain this grant funding and then uh, create this space for the Hope All Day Recovery Center. It's right in downtown Mays Landing. Um, they've done a really great job with the building. I would encourage everyone to um, pop in, say hello, uh, check out what they have to offer. Um, it's not a place where somebody goes. Um, you know, as they are coming out of recovery, it's really part of the continuum of care for long term recovery. Um, so it's a it's a sober and safe place for people to to be able to hang out and socialize. Um, it has services for uh, family members who maybe need grief counseling. Um, 
or need, uh, you know, they might be raising grandchildren and need a place uh, to bring those kids and just get support um, for themselves. There's just a ton of resources um, available through this center. And again, I just want to encourage everybody um, to, to learn about it, check it out, and um, really help uh, paint the positive picture that it is because some people wrap a negative connotation around it. And, and I think that's really unfair for the great work that they're doing. Um, so please check it out. Thank you, Commissioner. Do I have any other comments from our commissioners? Hey, okay, seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll okay. call, please. Dallas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. yes. Motion carries. Resolution 234, please. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Human Services for the state health insurance program amount not to exceed $37,000. Motion. Second. Motion been made and second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll call, please. Dallas? Yes. Rotino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes, motion carries. Resolution 235, please. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development for the New Jersey Youth Corps Program amount not to exceed $425,000. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any comments from the commissioners? Being none, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. A hey, roll call, please. Dallas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 236, please. Grant agreement with the South Jersey Transportation Authority for fiscal year 2022 sub regional transportation planning work program funded amount one. $113,600, county in kind match $28,400. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll call please. Alice? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 237. Grant application to the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety for the alcohol and impaired driving, driving while intoxicated, traffic enforcement and education program. Amount not to exceed $35,000. Motion. Okay. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments for the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll call, please. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes, motion carries. Now we're into our professional service contract resolution 238. Agreement with the Clears Engineering and Design Incorporated consenting to assumption of professional service agreements previously awarded to Mazer Consulting PA for material testing services. No additional costs. Ten moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Bounds. Yeah, to Jerry, I believe. Um, now that they've been acquired by Collier Engineering, are they going to maintain a local office or is this going to be uh, their out of town office going to run everything? I, I think they're going to be local, but John, John is on, uh, John Peterson, who, you know, he deals with them every day. John, you there? Yes, Jerry. Uh, yeah. It's our understanding, it's our understanding that they are maintaining their existing office. 
they just absorbed uh, Mazer. Uh, Mazer took that over from um, Testwell Craig, Craig testing before, uh, and they're keeping their testing facilities there. So that's their local office for all the stuff that they do for us. Okay, yeah, that was that was my concern. I didn't want a, a bigger conglomerate moving this out of our area. Um, we can keep it local. Do we have any other comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, well, we'll roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Um, as we get into our big contracts this evening, I want to say for the benefit of the general public participating today, the board today will be voting on several big contracts that will benefit members of the Atlantic County Cooperative. Atlantic County government is the lead agency for this cooperative that is made up of government agencies, school districts and authorities within Atlantic County. Members can join together as a group to purchase certain goods and services, items such as janitorial services, medical supplies, to name just a few. The county also participates and benefits from the New Jersey Cooperative Purchase Program. So these types of programs allow members, along with the county, to get reduced costs throughout any of their pricing. Okay, so then we're going to go into 239 under bids. Amending resolution number 70, adopted February 2nd, 2021, a big contract with Arawak Paving Company Incorporated to remove pay to play language. Motion. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Yep. Commissioner Bells. Yeah, just just yeah. report of order. In the in this, um, we have um, some of the language. One is pay to pay, and then also further down in the uh, resolution itself, it has play to play. So we just need to change both of them to pay to play. Okay, thank you very much, Commissioner. Do we have any other comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, well, we'll roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risling? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to resolution 240. Big contract with various vendors to furnish and deliver janitorial and custodial supplies to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative amount not to exceed $466,864.84. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, we okay. can have a roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Tino? Yes. <clears throat> Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to resolution 241. Big contract with various vendors to furnish and deliver medical supplies to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative amount not to exceed $680,276.22. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Okay, any comments from the public? Comments from the public. Okay, well, we'll roll call. Ballas? Yes. yes. Tina? Tina? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Kern. Yes, motion carries. Uh, resolution 242. Bid contract with Garoza and Semeca Construction Incorporated 
to provide renovations of the exterior facade of the one stop career center amount not to exceed eight hundred nine thousand five hundred dollars. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? Madam, Madam oh, Chair. Sorry. Thank Commissioner you. Risley. Uh, Jerry, could you give a brief overview of what exactly is to be done? Uh, yes. The building's about 17 years old, the way I count. Yes. Yes, and, and uh, we have our facilities director who's... Jerry, you there? I'm here, Jerry, yes. Okay. Hello, Commissioner. Uh, resolution 242 is uh, to redo the exterior facade of the One Stop Career Center. All, all of the stucco facade unfortunately has cracked and, and there's water infiltration coming in around the windows, uh, up along the roof edge coping. So that's all being removed and um, all the window facade that, that stick out about a foot and a half are gonna be uh, removed. They're gonna put metal cladding around the entire exterior of the building. Um, new top coping, some a little bit of roof work to, to, uh, to uh, some new roof drains. It's a pretty big job. It's not the work from coming inside. Yeah, I don't know if we have any recourse or not because the building will be 17 years of age in June, as I count. And um, it just seems to be a lot for 17 years. Great. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the commissioners? Okay. And we. We didn't have any comments from the public, is that correct? No comments from the public. Okay, well, okay. Alice? Yes. yes. You know? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to resolution 243. Big contract with Bird Dog Paving Limited Liability Corporation to provide concrete sidewall installation at the Atlantic County Civil Courthouse in Atlantic City. Amount not to exceed $175,044.38. Motion. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Commissioner Bells. Yes, um, to Jerry or Jerry. Um, is this uh, part of the work with the single point of entry that was constructed at the civil courthouse? Yeah, it's just an extension. But I, I do want to, before I let Jerry get into the the, uh, the details, when I mentioned this, that we were going to do and replace what presently is there, which is that that brick, they were the happiest group of people that I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> Probably the happiest our law department has been in a long time. But, but Jerry can go through. Uh, uh, with, with you, the details. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is this is the removal of all the paver, existing pavers around the uh, three sides of the courthouse. There's been many, many trip and falls over the years uh, with the roots. We're removing trees. The roots are pushing the pavers up. So we're removing the uh, pavers and the uh, this black top underneath. There's a little bit of concrete. And then we're installing a sidewalk around the entire perimeter. Perfect. Yeah, this is this is money well spent, as as Jerry Darasso said. You know, with the amount of uh, lawsuits that stemmed out of that, um, you know, I, I witnessed you know some of the the slip and falls over there, and um, it's it's money well spent. And, and, and Commissioner, uh, the the last the last part of that, we went through this with the um, budget subcommittee. There'll be Jersey barriers. As you know, to prevent cars from coming up and going, just going through and hitting the building, as has happened in other locations. So the last, the last piece will then be the Jersey, the installation of Jersey barriers. Okay. Are they going to be planters or just barriers? Oh, con con concrete uh, Jersey barriers. Okay. Good. About Thank 4, you. Guys. Pounds, Four thousand pounds a piece. All right. Well, it's it's imperative that we do have that, especially with the stuff that goes on around the world, the times that we're living in. It's a shame, but um, you don't do not want a, a car driving up and into that building um, for any reason whatsoever. 
Thank you, Commissioner Murphy. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, do we have any other comments from our commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Here we have a change order with resolution 244, please. Change order number one, contract with Jersey Architectural Door and Supply Incorporated for installation and repair of a glass window frames to extend the term date. date. Net increase $25,000. Motion. Second. Motion made in second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair, uh, I know uh, Commissioner Corsi isn't here, but I do want the record to reflect that he had no objection to this in our budget discussion on this item. No objection. Thank you very much for your comments, Commissioner. Do we have any other comments? Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Hey, well, have a roll call, please. Alice? Yes. Chino? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us resolution 245. Resolution authorizing the county to make purchases through the state of New Jersey's cooperative purchasing program amount not to exceed $10,062,000. Motion. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Tino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 246, please. Extraordinary unspecifiable contract with insurance agencies incorporated to obtain flood insurance for the Atlantic County Animal Shelter. Amount not to exceed $1,675. Motion. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, we'll have a roll call, please. Alice? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 247, please. EUS contract with insurance agencies incorporated to purchase a policy which will reduce the named storm wind deductible amount not to exceed $37,409.45. Motion. Move, second, second. Motion made and second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing none. Any comments from the public? Comments from the public. Good. No? No comments from the public, no. Okay, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. 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 And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 248, please. EUS contract with Panaris Technologies to provide workforce development consulting services amount not to exceed $50,000. Motion. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? <clears throat> yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 249. Alternate method contract with Unitronics Data Systems Incorporated 
to provide maintenance services for the abacus and administrative systems for the Department of Family and Community Development, amount not to exceed $70,903.20. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Do we have any comments from the commissioners? See none. Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Can you have a roll call, please? Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 250, please. Interlocal services agreement with the Atlantic County Improvement Authority for the administration of the 2020 Community Development Block Grant and the 2020 Home Investment Partnership Program. Amount not to exceed $1,891,602. Motion. Second. Which means second. Any comments from our commissioners? Madam Chair, um, I don't know. I don't think John Lamy is on. I was just going to ask him to highlight. Uh, there's some components to this um, block grant that our residents can leverage uh, with regard to um, to housing uh, rehab or or home buying, and and I know that's kind of a hot topic right now. So, um, just want to highlight that for people who might be looking for assistance in those two areas to to check out those programs. Thank you, Commissioner. I think Ms. Mr. McGuigan is on from ACIA. I'd spoken to him okay. earlier. If you, he could he could go through that if you'd like some of those uh, programs mentioned. Bob, Bob, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here, uh, Commissioner Gatto. Um, as John explained on the the budget meeting and and for the the help of the public, uh, the the uh, CDBG and home grant are uh, they're very useful grants that are given to the county uh, by the federal government uh, each year. Um, each year we use uh, specifically for the home buyer and, and home rehab program. That's uh, that's from the, the home investment partnership program. Uh, this year we're, we're, we are going to receive uh, about 600, almost $700,000 uh, for that program. Uh, we've allocated 250,000 of that to the uh, the first time home buyer program, uh, which is currently open. Uh, anyone uh, anyone who's interested in that, uh, if they are a low or moderate uh, income uh, home, home buyer, uh, they can co contact our office. Our phone number over here is 609-343-2390. Uh, um, and uh, if you know, there's a, a few requirements uh, that we would walk them through uh, in order to to make sure that they were uh, fit the pro the program's uh, you know the regulations. Um, but it's a great program. They can get uh, they can get a, the program used to be good for ten thousand uh, dollars per per home buyer. Uh, HUD regulations have made us change that, where it's sort of a variable number at this point. Um, it could be you know a little higher. It could be a little lower, depending on their uh, their their circumstances, um, but it's a great program. It helps help helps uh, people buy homes every year. Uh, about twenty five people a, a year or so, um, which is which is great. Um, the homeowner rehab program, which is also available by contacting by contacting our office. Um, again, 609-343-2390. I'll get it right this time. Um, uh, is for anyone who is currently a lower moderate income. Home homeowner who needs uh, who needs repairs on their home to get it back up to code, um, and what what that that uh, funding is is a it's a five year a five year no interest loan as uh, so, so so long as they stay in in their home, um, and uh, what what it does is uh, they we send out a a a person to check out the home. Uh, an inspector, they agree with the homeowner on what uh, on what the the fixes should be and what are the best uses of the of the funding, and um, and that can go up to twenty five uh, twenty or twenty five thousand dollars depending on the uh, the size of the of, of the job, um, and and then we go out we bid put the uh, the work out to bid and uh, get in a in a pool of qualified uh, 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 you know uh, contractors. Uh, they come back with the price and they go out there and, and do the work and uh, 
the person gets to to live live in the home uh, and have all the the, the fixes and uh, it really uh, it's a great a great program. Yeah, it absolutely is. And and thank you for being here to you know explain this. Uh, do we have any other comments from the commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Uh, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas. Yes. Rutino. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Bisley. Yes. And Kern. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, I'll entertain I'll entertain a motion to combine and adopt resolutions numbers 255 to 260. And these are appointments and re reappointments. I don't know if anybody is in uh, on the public that is part of any of these appointments. Does anybody see anybody there? Yeah, uh -huh. okay. Madam Chair. So I'll, I'll entertain the motion. Madam Chair, you mean 251 to 260? Yes. 251 to 260. Can we throw 261 in there too? Oh, sure. We could do that. So All right. 251 to 261. Second. Motion made the second. <clears throat> any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Hey, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes, motion carries. But I do want to thank all of these individuals to you know, put up a lot of their time for these committees, and we appreciate that throughout the county. Okay, that brings us to resolution 263. And I want to say, as I mentioned at the at the beginning of our meeting, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And while we often think of mental health crisis in adults, I'd like to share um, some data with you. One in six youths age six to 17 experience a mental health condition each year. With many of our children coping with the impact of COVID on their educational experience over the last 14 months, it's so important that we bring awareness to mental health and that it's okay to ask for help. No one should feel alone in their mental health journey. So now I will have resolution 263. Resolution recognizing May as Mental Health Awareness Month. Sponsor, Chairwoman Maureen Kern. Motion. Second. Second. Motion been made and second. Any comments from our commissioners? Uh, just, just to say, Madam Chair, um, mental health is often a precipitator to drug abuse, opioid abuse, when people try to self-medicate in order to feel better. And so that, that's an, another reason to ask for help before, uh, before anything drastic happens. It's okay. It's okay to ask for help. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's up to us too, as well as we see somebody that needs help to offer them, you know, the right. knowledge of what we have to offer as well throughout the county. We have some people working extremely hard these days with the mental health issues. Do I have any other comments from our commissioners? Madam Chair, yes, Commissioner Days. Yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know, mental health is health and it's, uh, you know, extremely important to to highlight that throughout the year um, and even more so, you know, as we um, hopefully um, in the near future come out of this pandemic, but uh, it's going to have long lasting effects on uh, on who knows how many people from, you know, our, our youngest students up to our, our oldest who haven't seen family for well over a year. So, you know, I do want to stress that mental health is health and thank you for continuing to highlight that. Thank you, Commissioner. Do I have any other comments from our commissioners? Madam Chair. Commissioner Bells. Yes. Again, um, thank you for bringing this resolution forward. Um, knowing that May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we really need a mental health awareness year, especially with us transitioning out of the pandemic and us transitioning out of the war in Iraq with so many veterans that are going to be coming home and having to be reintroduced into society. Um, PTSD is real. 
and some of the things that, that they have seen and been through um, overseas for our country, um, we really need to support each and every one of them. Um, also, our public safety people, our police, fire, and EMS, you know, the, the tragedy that they see on a daily basis, um, you know, not even thinking about, you know, shootings and stuff like that, but just automobile crashes where people are injured, um, killed. Um, let's let's keep all of them in our, in our thoughts and prayers. And again, I thank you for bringing this resolution forward. It's very important. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other comments from our commissioners? Seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? Oh, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I was talking on mute. Um, just wanted to also encourage everyone to check out the Mental Health Association, our Atlanta County Mental Health Association Facebook page. Um, they have on a daily basis uh, in person and virtual groups going on um, that cover a plethora of topics, anything from what Commissioner Ballas just mentioned with regard to uh, veteran or police um, mental health and, and kind of dealing with PTSD of those situations uh, to how to manage stress, how to manage anger. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. So I would highly recommend uh, following that page. Thank you, Commissioner. And I thank you for bringing that forward because as being part of the Mental Health Advisory Committee, they really do get together and make sure that we have all this information that's available to us. And believe me, they've been working over time through this. Uh, do we have any other comments from our commissioners? Seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Okay, we'll have a roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Fortino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to Resolution 264. Resolution encouraging and supporting Governor Phil Murphy to eliminate restrictions on the convention industry and meeting venues in Atlantic County. Sponsor, Commissioner Karen L. Fitzpatrick. Moved. Second. Motion <laughs> made. Second. We have any commissioner comments? Commissioner Fitzpatrick, the floor is yours. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Before um, Commissioner Fitzpatrick speaks, can we just have the clerk read it in full? I mean, there's some staggering statistics and numbers in this resolution. And for the benefit of anyone who's online today that, that have not had a chance to look at this resolution, um, it's, it's very impactful with the, the statistics and, and numbers that are in this. Yeah, thank you for that. Madam Clerk? Whereas meetings and conventions make up a large segment of the tourism industry in Atlantic City, and historically, professionals attending meetings and conventions spend a greater amount of a great a greater amount of dollars at area establishments, including restaurants, bars, attractions, and hotels than other demographics. And whereas 2019 was the best year for meetings and conventions in Atlantic City since casino closings in 2014 and 2015, and the first quarter of 2020 showed even greater anticipated growth in this segment. And whereas the meetings and conventions industry is a major employer spurring economic activity in Atlantic County and accounting for 57,000 unemployed workers in various hospitality fields due to COVID-19. And whereas without, without the convention and meeting industry, the negative economic impact to both large and small businesses, including lost wages, is devastating to the market and residents of Atlantic City and Atlantic County. Atlantic City cannot afford to continue to sit empty and sustain the long term impacts of loss of clients confidence due to inability to schedule conventions and trade shows for upcoming or future dates. And whereas six major conventions scheduled for 2021 at the Atlantic City Convention Center associated with sales of 30,765 room nights and 32.9 million in economic impact are a sampling of potentially lost events if the capacities are not increased. This does not include hotel and casino properties. And whereas the governor's current executive order limits meeting attendance to 25 people, no matter the size of the room or venue, and whereas the Atlantic City Convention Center and Atlantic City hotels have rooms available in excess of hundreds 
of thousands of square feet and whereas CDC protocols are in place at these venues and whereas 2.6 million New Jersey residents are now fully vaccinated, which is 55% of the governor's goal of 4.7 million residents and more than half of all United States residents have been vaccinated. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Atlantic County Board of Commissioner Commissioners deems it appropriate and necessary to eliminate restrictions on the convention industry and meeting venues that are critical to supporting Atlantic County families, Atlantic County businesses, and the Atlantic County economy. And be it further resolved that the Atlantic County Board of Commissioners encourages and supports Governor Murphy to take all measures necessary to eliminate all restrictions on the convention industry and meeting ven venues in the city of Atlantic City and County of Atlantic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Thanks Patrick. for asking our clerk to read the resolution. They are staggering numbers. And um, when I learned about those uh, six events that are trying to come to Atlantic City, but can't make their plans because they don't know what the capacities of the rooms will be. Um, I knew that we had to say something out loud about this. Um, last week, uh, Atlantic City Chamber President Michael Chait described the situation where casinos have uh, people on the floor, the, the rooms are big, and we are just asking for consistent policies uh, that that would allow also people to come to conventions and meetings in Atlantic City where the meeting rooms are also very large, as we said, hundreds of thousands of square feet. And the numbers that we're talking about here, uh, the economic impact and the room night sales are just related to the convention center, are not related to the hotels and casinos, which I'm sure our chairwoman can also um, talk about what's what's going on in the hotels, that they are also unable to um, uh, give their clients confidence at this time to go ahead and finalize their plan. And although yesterday the governor uh, increased indoor specifically catered events to 250 people, that doesn't spe also specifically say meetings and conventions. So it's a, a lot of it's about sem semantics, but clearly 250 people is not enough when we have 10,000, 15,000 uh, people coming to um, a, a medium sized trade show or convention. And, and you talk about the League of Municipalities in the fall where 20,000 people will come to Atlantic City. And you're talking about people who travel for a living, they're vaccinated, they're, they know what to do to be safe. So I, I hope that my colleagues will vote to um, pass this resolution so that we have a united voice speaking out for our economy here in Atlantic in in Atlantic County. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks. Yeah, um, just today we had at Harris a six hundred thousand dollar piece of business cancel for September. <laughs> they canceled because we do not have a timeline. Even in opening it up and saying two fifty, I believe that. Um, he may use that 250 number for, you know, as long as we could social distance within meetings. Uh, this group, it was huge. And now we've lost them for a couple of years. And, you know, we need a timeline. We can't, they, they can't commit unless they know that they all, more than 250 people can be, you know, in, in one setting. They need it fully open. Otherwise, they are not coming. I have cancels every day. The salespeople are just depressed. It's, yeah, but we have no timeline. That's what we need. We need a timeline. And then I'm not even sure how the travel ban is. Maybe somebody here may know, but I don't know if we've gotten rid of the travel ban as well. So, commissioners, do we have any comments? I'm chair. Yeah, Commissioner Bertino. Thank you. I, I'll be supporting it, obviously. Um, I think uh, if we, as we watch the trends, we listen to our our county health people, she gives a, a, at the beginning of our meeting, she always gives us an update. We're at over 50%. I think this, uh, we're mentioning a lot about the casino industry, uh, the convention industry, and it's great. It has to open up. You will not have an industry, as you guys have indicated, 
conventions come in and book two, three years out. Uh, when they're sitting here talking about pricing and locking it down compared to other sections of the country where everyone's wide open, uh, you got, we're going to get killed. Uh, this trickle down happens all the way down when it comes to meeting rooms, even down to your local. And I get them from local firemen that are trying to rent their halls out for weddings. They can't do anything with any of that. It trickles down through everyone in the county. So this is huge. It's got to be opened up or there won't be much business left in New Jersey to come back to. Thank you, Commissioner. Do I have any other commissioner comments? Madam Chair. Commissioner uh, Ballas? That was sir. Go ahead, go ahead, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see him. Go ahead, go ahead. Commissioner Risley, I didn't see your hand. Thank you, I, I just wanted to say that I couldn't agree more with what's being said. The, there's so many negative things that happens to people in social situations for this lockdown. It's too tight. It's ridiculous. People have to be able to work to feed their families, to pay their bills, to get along in life, to raise their children, pay for college costs, all these things. This embargo on our industry in our area has got to stop. And it's time, it's past time to make these changes. And I hope the governor wakes up and moves forward because we need this in this area. You know, we're not North Jersey. We depend, our economy is totally dependent on recreation, vacationing, conventions. That's our area, that's our area has always been this way. So the governor's got to take his foot off the brake here. And let us live and let us breathe. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Risley. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bells. Yes. Um, so first, um, I have a question for Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Um, in reading this, I'm just wondering if basically what we're saying by voting yes is that we disagree with the governor and the governor's office handling of the reopening of the state, that it is costing us thousands of jobs and millions of dollars because of the executive orders that have been issued by the governor's office. And by voting yes, we would like the governor to see it our way and not his way and change his executive order and open this area up. Is that what we're trying to accomplish here? Not exactly. I, I wouldn't say that the executive orders were uh, the wrong thing to do, but I think that, it, you know, we're, we're isolated and, and, uh, you know, this, this is our situation. And I just think that we need to say, don't forget about us. Uh, the, the, uh, rules that are governing the casino floors are inconsistent with the rules that are governing co meetings and conventions. We want see right so i I, just, I want to make sure that i'm voting the right way and i don't want to be going against our governor and his decision as to how he's running our state and the reopening if that isn't really your goal if your goal is to say that he's that he's wrong and we need to open this up and change the executive order to open up for conventions so it doesn't cost us this millions of dollars and thousands of jobs then I would absolutely support it. But um, I'm not sh really sure where you're going with this. Where I'm going is, I'm Governor Murphy, we need to know how, how we can talk to our clients and when they're going to be coming back. He's uh, clearly talking about opening up for the summer season. And he's discussing leisure activities uh, Re, re, you can sit at the bar now. You can go to restaurants 100%. He hasn't talked about the meetings and conventions industry, and it needs to be discussed. That's what this is about. Okay. So were you, after the press conference, were you or um, Assemblyman Amato or Maggio able to get any reaction from the governor's office? No, we haven't had her from the governor's office. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I'll, I'll vote yes, and, and 
like I said, the, the way I'm reading it is that, that we disagree with the, the governor's executive order and the reopening of the state and we need to, to get conventions opened and um, get jobs back for our people here. Again, we're, we're you're showing over 57,000 unemployed workers because of the hospital, hospitality fields and you know upwards of $32 million or more, or it could be a little bit less. Um, but even if it's five million dollars, it's too much. We need to we need to reopen the state, as um, other commissioners have already um, said tonight. Right. Well, I'm, again, I'm not saying that I disagree with what's happened in the past and in, and in the past year. I think that um, we have done a good job. We were a hot spot being so close to New York, and I I think we could have gotten into a a lot more. Uh, serious trouble. We, we've we've had a devastating time in our state as it is, but now we're all we're taking the precautions. People are getting vaccinated. Um, that we know what the rules are, and we want to say that now's the time. We're ready. We can do this. Let us do our business. Right. I, I I agree with you, but we're we're talking about now, not the past. We're talking about now and moving forward in the future. That yes. he needs to change his executive order to open. That's that's the point of this, right? To open conventions so we can book these because you can't book a convention today for this weekend. You need to book a convention now for maybe August, September, October. Correct? Is that the way that works? At least, yes. Exactly. At least, at least is right. Sometimes it's <laughs> a year or two years in advance. Um, right. And like I have mentioned before, we've lost conventions for years because. Uh, of the uncertainty that they have booking in Atlantic City. There's a lot of promotions they do for their, you know, conventions. There's there's much, much work put together for these larger conventions and they cannot wait and they are not waiting any longer. So that what happened today happened because there was not a timeline or any information that made them, <coughs> excuse me, according to them, comfortable in booking uh, the event at Harris, which has two 50,000 square foot ballrooms plus other space. But, I, you know, I just want to mention also, this is this is about our small businesses. Uh, the summer takes care of itself, always has in Atlantic City. We need these conventions in off season to keep our, our employees employed. They are out. It is becoming, as we mentioned earlier, a mental health issue. They want to get back to work. But you can't yeah, just yeah. come in and have them work a couple hours. <clears throat> Most of these positions are tip positions. Them coming in and giving up what they are getting is not helping. They they can't do it. They they need to know that they're going to have their income and know that we're fully open. So it has to do with our families. It has to do with the small businesses so they can support their families. And it has to do with all of the businesses throughout the city. But any other comments from Commissioner? Sorry, I'm a little, we're a little passionate about this subject. Any other comments for the commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Uh, any comments from the public? Yes, we yes. do have a comment um, from Brian. We are going to raise him from an attendee to a panelist. And just uh, Brian, you can speak. How you doing? This is Brian from EHT. I got a question for about this resolution for Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Um, okay. Echoing what Commissioner Ballas said, if you're running for assembly and you have the ear of the current assemblyman, why are you bringing this issue before the county instead of pushing our state officials to act? Assemblymen wrote, have written letters, two letters to the governor's office, one in September and one in March. I can't do anything at the state level. This is what I can do, so this is what I'm doing. Bringing it forward from the county, at least we're saying something. And I I think it's gotten some attention. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with this. I'm just wondering, you know, we need to be acting more. I got one other quick question. Given that you're employed by Meet AC and your income is heavily dependent on whether or not these conventions are fully open, how is this not a conflict of interest for you in your official capacity in you know pushing for fully reopening the conventions? 
you know, I work really hard to keep my two lives um, separate, my professional life and my political life. Um, uh, on this occasion, they, they collided. But I, I would have been thinking about this and it's, it's not just for me. I mean, you hear all the people who are, who are I, I'm advocating for the people I represent in Atlantic County. Um, because I know this business, I don't think that should prevent me from, from taking this stand. I mean, if I were a veteran, I'd be able to advocate for veterans. Same thing. Okay, well, I'm just wondering where was this resolution, you know, con for Governor Murphy to lift the restrictions on restaurants and small businesses, you know? We did that in the, what, about six months ago. We all voted on that. It was a unanimous vote. Thank you. That's all I got. You're welcome. Thanks, Brian. Do we have any other comments from the public? Uh, yes, we have uh, Joyce Molino. Ms. Molino, we will move you from a panelist, excuse me, an attendee to a panelist. Uh, Ms. Molino, you can speak now. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My thoughts are, um, of course, we want Atlantic City to get open. And everybody knows why they were closed in um, Atlantic City. But I'm thinking that everything is going to be open in July. And if there was something sent to the governor's office concerning opening up earlier for the businesses and the conventions that would be coming in, I would rather see something written in there concerning those items because uh, my thoughts are that everything is going to be wide open in July, but we want the we want the customers to be able to book for next year or at the ending of this year. Um, I, I'm not I'm not understanding this whole um, feedback on trying to um, get something done uh, at this rate of speed uh, that it would will happen. If everybody's already spoken to the uh, governor's office or the assembly people or the state people, whoever you speak to, so I my concern is really it's it's something there that's missing to me um, of what this is all about. Thank you, Ms. Molinell. Do you have any other comments? Do we? Can I just answer that? Yeah. Thank you. Um, the reason is, as Chairwoman and I have been discussing, that uh, clients need time to plan their events. Opening the city in July isn't helping the events that are scheduled for August. And the events that are even scheduled for January, February, March of next year need a good six, seven, eight months or longer to prepare and market their events. And that's that's the that's the reason for this to to try and push it along. So to Madam Chair, if I may to um, Commissioner Fitzpatrick to um, Ms. Molino's point, uh, and I think to the chairwoman's point, I think what might be missing from this, and I, I think it could be a simple add in the be it resolved is that we we not only need the the restrictions eliminated, but we need the timeline in which that's going to happen. Um, okay, I, I think that timeline piece is what's missing and is important. Okay, Madam Chair. Yes, please. I, I hear my colleagues' discuss, uh, thoughts on that. Uh, I'm not in agreement with that. I really think that uh, the resolution as the state's telling him to take all measures necessary to eliminate all convention restrictions. The language is clear and it's straight and direct. And when you're dealing with Trenton, as we know, you better deal straight and direct. I, I really think that language should stay like that. Um, um, that's my thoughts on it. It's time for the restrictions to go. So you think that sentence means now? 
think as I read it, the sentence says that tells Governor Murphy that we support got him to take all measures necessary to eliminate all restrictions on the convention industry and meeting venues in the city of Atlantic City and the county of Atlantic. I read it for what it is. I, I would prefer to leave it. Okay, it's your resolution. Thank you. Unless we have any other comments. Okay. Yes, uh, we, we have another comment from the public. If you're accepting further comments from the public. Chairwoman. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have Annette. Annette, you may speak. Yes, uh, I have a question for Commissioner Fitzpatrick. You say the convention center will lose millions of dollars if capacity restrictions aren't lifted. So do you believe Governor Murphy is not following the best available info? I, I can't get inside the governor's head. I, I'm saying what I believe is important information that trying to open a conversation. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other comments from the public? Uh, no, we do not. Okay. Any further comments from the commissioners? And Madam, Madam Chair, just to clarify, you're about to vote on the proposed resolution as it is written without any amendment, just for clarity on the record. That's what you're about to vote for, unless somebody makes a motion to the contrary. I have not heard a motion. I heard some comments, but I didn't hear any motion, unless somebody's going to make a motion. No. no. Okay, um, Mr. We are gonna vote on this now. And I just want to ask my counsel, do I need to abstain from this since I work in this industry? The question requires a little bit of research. The general rule, there, there is a case on it, gets into whether or not um, it's an overall vote in the public interest as to a vote that may have um, a personal interest. My advice to you, being the lawyer that I am, would be to err on the side of caution um, w without having researched the issue in depth. So that would be my advice on that issue for you and anybody else. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Tino? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Well, I want to see this happen for, you know, all of our members of our community and our families throughout the community. I will have to abstain. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. It was uh, some good input from everyone. Okay, that concludes the written portion of our agenda. Any reports of special committees of the board? Madam Chair, yep. uh, I, I do want to just mention that we met with um, the Shared Services Committee, met with the new um, Shared Service uh, Coordinator, Tim Kreischer. Um, we had a good discussion with him, uh, talked about some things that uh, I think we as a board would like to see uh, from him on a regular basis uh, in terms of updates. And um, he told us some of the work that he's doing. Um, one of those things is just taking an inventory of all current shared services throughout the county, uh, both uh, from county to municipality, county to county, or even you know within the municipalities. And um, uh, we're we're hoping that will come to fruition in some kind of um, value added. Uh, thing, uh, hopefully a website, uh, potentially something else, but um, 
uh, that other places could use to uh, look and see what's out there and maybe leverage best practices. Um, and then um, he also mentioned that in that process of gathering that, there has been a lot of um, ideation and discussion um, that have prompted different things to be researched and looked at. And, you know, there's there's small things and there's potentially big things. So um, he'll be providing us regular updates uh, to the committee. We'll bring those uh, updates here to the full board. Um, and in the meantime, if anybody has any questions or ideas for him, um, they shouldn't hesitate to uh, to reach out to uh, share those those thoughts. I agree, Commissioner, and I think we should have him here the next uh, meeting or so. You know, we'll check his calendar and uh, see if he's ready to give us some updates for everyone. Okay, do I have any other reports from any commissioners? Madam any Chair. Other? Yep, Commissioner Bowles. Yeah, just real quick. Um, tomorrow night is the Veterans Advisory Board meeting. Um, we will be having Congressman Jeff Van Drew um, on that meeting to take questions from the board, but also to update us on the progress of the Veterans Clinic, the new Veterans Clinic that'll be coming to Atlantic County. So um, once I get more information on that after the meeting at our next meeting, I will report back. Thank you, Commissioner. And these are public meetings, correct? Yes. So if anybody wants to, you know, they can go on our website and find it there. They're Zoom, is that correct? They're through Zoom, correct. Yeah. So if anybody would like to go on, please do. They would appreciate people coming on. Okay. Do I have any other reports of the commissioners? Okay. Seeing none, any unfinished business? Um, Madam Chair. Um, Last last time, I think it was, we talked about the DEP's uh, plans and, um, you know, the 100 year flood situation. Um, Dave Rosenblatt from the DEP is going to be speaking to the Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce uh, via a virtual meeting on Thursday at nine o'clock in the morning. And people can register for that for free at acchamber.com, I think. Um, and additionally, I had a little technical <coughs> difficulty after getting uh, on the meeting, and I would like to declare my vote to approve the minutes from the previous meeting, March 16th, if that could be part of the record. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Do I have any other unfinished business? Hey, seeing none, any new business? Okay. Uh -huh. Madam Chair, sorry for unfinished business. Just wanted to close the loop with the commissioners that uh, uh, we did get the uh, Lake Lenape Dam grant uh, submitted on time. Uh, and I know a lot of our uh, engineering staff and administrative staff took a lot of time to work on that, as well as um, the staff and elected officials on the Hamilton Township side, in particular, Deputy Mayor Carl Vitale. Um, so Fingers crossed now that we get the funds, but uh, just uh, kudos to everybody for the work they put in there. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other uh, unfinished or new business? Okay, uh, we have received copies of written communication and petitions. Any commissioner comments of anything that they may have received? Seeing none, we'll now open uh, for public comment portion. Anyone that would like to speak, please type yes and the resolution number or what they want to, you know, just type yes in there. In the question and answer box, you'll be raised from an attendee to a panelist. Uh, when you're raised, please state your name and uh, municipality. Uh, Crystal Brook indicated she wanted to speak. I don't know if she's still on. Um, doesn't appear that she is. Uh, she wanted to speak about the lighthouse on Lake Lenape. I don't Apparently see her anymore. Yeah, I think she's left the call. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Okay, any comments for the good of the order? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.